Hey guys, Wilson here. This is a hopefully pretty quick run through on how to properly use an engineering notebook. I'm going to be using a couple of PowerPoints from Project Lead the Way through the course of uh, this course. And uh, you'll notice some things I'll mark as really important and some things um, I don't feel are that important. So, let's get started. Um, an engineering notebook is something I'm going to give you guys in the next day or two. And uh, it is a notebook that we're going to use to uh, keep track of everything you think about in this class. And uh, this is a design course, so you're going to be doing a lot of thinking. So first of all, an engineering notebook is a book that is a formal documentation of everything you do in chronological order. So... Um, the things earlier in the book or things earlier in time. And uh, everything is recorded. Everything. So if somebody is unfamiliar with the work, they can read through your engineering notebook and pick up where you left off. That's kind of your goal. Uh, it's that level of detail. Uh, this is also a legal document. So if you come up with a really cool design and somebody in your class steals it, the quality of your engineering notebook uh, can help you win that court case and help you make all the money you deserve from your design. So, um, yeah, proving your um, ownership of that idea is based on the detail and the quality of your engineering notebook. So it's important. A um, couple of different types of people to use this. Um, you're going to see this type of thing in engineering uh, in industry a lot. Uh, R&D stands for research and development. So if somebody at Boeing is working on a new wing design, their engineering notebook becomes a legal documentation to their work. Um, it helps show a relationship between their work and other people's work. It uh, becomes a communication skill. Uh, you guys are going to be using a lot of your engineering notebook pages as pages in your portfolio that you turn in. Um, and uh, yeah, this is in a really weird order. But engineering students, you guys, are going to use these things to help manage and organize your ideas. So, uh, we're going to study the design process throughout this course, and um, the entire process is what is stored in your engineering notebook. So, uh, how you discovered the problem, all of the research that you did to help develop your ideas, all of your brainstormed ideas get recorded, any calculations, daily thoughts, uh, pictures of your progress when you guys are prototyping in the shop. You can take pictures and uh, glue them into your, glue them or tape them into your notebook. Um, I've done a lot of interviews. I love talking to people smarter than me and uh, recording their information in my notebook to use to make a better product. Anything said in meetings, uh, discussions with your group members, and uh, the list goes on. So lots of stuff goes in here. Uh, we have a table of contents, and your engineering notebook is actually going to look a lot like this. So um, that's pretty cool. You're going to have a table of contents that you can keep things in order. All of your notebook pages are going to be in graph paper form like this. Oh, this is actually pretty cool. The reason it says proprietary information here, that means that this information is owned by somebody. And um, that somebody is you if you use the papers properly. So, by that I mean that you need to sign each page. You see the signature down here. If... And only if you come up with a design that's so cool that you want to have somebody else verify that you're the one that designed it, that's called a witness, and they will sign down here. And then otherwise you number your pages and you date your pages. So this becomes a legal document. All the work is in pen. You guys are going to argue with me about using pen, but guess what? It's what all the adults do. Uh, pencil is harder to read. It smudges. It can be erased, which means somebody else can erase your work. Um, you don't want to use markers because they bleed through the paper. 
So you're left with pen, and um, ask me sometime about ballpoint pen. I will show you guys all the best ones to use, which are also the cheapest ones to use. Uh, pages are numbered. That's going to be taken care of, and um, notebook pages are bound. The reason they're numbered, the reason it's ink, and the reason the notebooks are bound, as opposed to like spiral bound, is so that you cannot remove pages or information. It's because, again, it's a legal document that you guys are creating word by word, sketch by sketch. There's your number. Um, okay, so obviously you guys are going to start at the top of the page, work your way to the bottom. Not actually that concerned about that. What I do think is important is if you leave empty space, you need to make that empty space intentional. You need to say, hey, this is empty for a reason. You draw a line or an X around it, and you sign it, or I'm fine with initials. But that way, again, somebody can't add information. They can't write, Wilson's a butthole, in your engineering notebook, and then say that you wrote it. So put that line there, and you won't get in trouble. There it is. Look at that. It's a zoom in. All right. Um, because you're using pen, because you're not tearing out your pages, it's really important that you guys don't uh, try to erase anything. So if you make a mistake, let's see, I bet this will zoom in. Neato. Um, draw a single line through the information and then put your initials there. That way we know that somebody else didn't um, try to mess with your engineering notebook, that you messed with your own engineering notebook. Uh, this is actually pretty funny because Botox is something people use to uh, paralyze their face to get rid of wrinkles, and borax is a chemical used for cleaning clothing. So that's a pretty important spelling correction to make. Um, yeah, you guys never erase anything because you don't really know when a bad idea might be a good idea later. So keep track of everything. All right, you date each entry, that's really obvious. Um, even if you have multiple days worth of work, you can see up here this is 513. Looks like they skipped a day, 515. Date each thing, that's going to help you keep track of when you came up with ideas. Uh, if you guys insert something, I was talking about pictures of prototypes before, you guys want to permanently attach them. Don't just leave pieces of paper in your notebook. You will drop it, they will fall out, and you will cry. Uh, glue is best. If you use tape, uh, you want to sign your name across the tape and across the piece of paper. That way, if somebody removes any of these three pieces of material, there's going to be a chunk of your signature left over. So it's going to be pretty obvious somebody messed with your notebook. Uh, we talked about signing a page. If you have somebody working with you or you want somebody to prove that you were the one that designed it, go ahead and have a witness signature. Um, I will offer um, myself as a witness to any designs you guys make because you're in my class. Uh, I will offer you guys a cabinet in the classroom uh, between the doors, and that's a place where you can store your notebook. Uh, as far as sketches, guys, labeling each part is so important. This is such a difficult sketch to understand. It's a, it's a great sketch, but there's just not a lot of information there. So if you uh, label them, the term I like to use is annotate. So you annotate your sketches. Um, that's going to give you so much more information, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, when we're doing the rocket project. Uh, calculation, same deal. I am so bad at just writing letters and numbers all the time instead of actually labeling what that information is. And guys, I will tell you, I have gone back into my engineering notebook and I have not understood my math and I have had to redo all of my math because I didn't label things. So label things! Oh, and we have zoom-ins neat. All right. Um, reflection's a big deal, guys. I will talk about that uh, all the time in class. I will have you guys do reflection papers in um, 
in your portfolio, so don't worry too much about reflecting in your engineering notebooks, but I will tell you that the more I challenge myself to think more, the more that I give myself opportunities to kind of think deeply about what I'm doing, the better ideas I come up with. So doing some reflection in your notebook might prove to be really valuable as you guys are coming up with brand new ideas. Be neat, be accurate, be legible, and be thorough. These three are so important because I'm going to have to read your notebook. If you guys make something that's supposed to communicate, and I don't understand your communication, it won't count for credit. Um, thorough is pretty obvious because it's supposed to have all the information. Alright, these are really cool, guys. These are some old engineering notebook entries. Um, this one looks like it is from 1939. Uh, this is a little jar to hold paint and your brush comes down to the bottom and soaks up the paint. Pretty cool. Uh, notice that there's all this information about how it's going to be used, where it's going to be sold, um, some of the unique features, what makes this product really cool. A patent is um, a cool idea that you actually register with the U.S. government so that nobody else can have your idea. A uh, nice sketch, used a little bit of color, very cool. Uh, this is the guy who made Tupperware, so kind of a neat way to be remembered, I suppose. Uh, Everett Bickley, this is a electromechanical flycatcher. Uh, again, great annotations. I wouldn't know that that's a scraper or that this is driven by a clock motor. Uh, one revolution per minute, slow is important for this. Uh, kerosene's in the bottom, so, and dead flies, because I can't draw dead flies, but you can label dead flies, that makes it easier. Um, and here is the oversized tennis racket from 1974. Um, these little numbers are called balloons, and they reference notes that are elsewhere in the document, so you go to this number, and you go to whatever pages notes are on, and that will explain all the cool features of the oversized tennis racket. All right, guys, that is just about it on engineering notebooks. This uh, next little thing I want to talk about is course binders. All of you are required to bring a one-inch binder into class. You leave it in class, so you don't have to carry it around, but I want you guys to have a one-inch binder so that you can store all of your course materials that are not in the engineering notebook. So there's going to be some worksheets, you guys might do some sketching on other sheets of paper, um, you guys are going to make these really big portfolios that you're going to have to turn in, and when I turn them back, you put them in your course binder. So, engineering notebook is all of your ideas, it's a legal document, must be done in pen, bring a pen with you every day. And um, the course binder is everything else. So all your sheets of paper go into there. And guys, listen up. Both of these you're going to be able to store in my classroom. So don't worry about carrying stuff around. All right. Make sure you guys can answer these questions. What is an engineering notebook? Legal document you store all your ideas in. Why keep an engineering notebook? So somebody can take over your project if they need to. And it's a legal document that helps protect your ideas. Who keeps one? You keep one. And you can review this video to cover the rest. I'm going to keep this under 15 minutes, and I did. Guys, keep watching this video over and over if you don't know this information. I will mark you down if your engineering notebook is not kept a standard. And there will be a quiz on this in the next page. Take care.